Hallelujah. And notice this is one of the few scriptures in scripture in the Bible where Jesus uses verily, verily. In your service to God, there is a token of God's government that is encapsulated in your service to God. There are many variables that God is going to control. Those variables are not in your power. Are you with me? One of the variables is time. God is going to control your time. God is going to control your seasons. A carnal man comes to the table with agendas. Comes to the table with ambitions. And even when he comes into the kingdom of God, he maintains the agendas and the ambitions. One of the things God does is that he regulates those variables until he defeats your ambition defeats your agenda and then when he has defeated your agenda he will bring you to a point where you will be stripped even Satan will take advantage of that situation <clears throat> by whispering to you and saying you are wasting and the Lord will allow you contend with that pressure that the devil is bringing and the pressure becomes stronger when God is about to proclaim the opening of a new season in your life. This metaphor, this parable that Jesus unveils here talks about what it takes for a believer to be fruitful in the sense of the kingdom of God. If we look at it from the agricultural perspective, when a corn of wheat falls to the ground, uh, we don't know wheat, but we know rice. And rice, like wheat, has a husk that covers the real seed. So when it falls to the ground, normally the same conditions under which you plant rice, the same, nearly the same conditions under which wheat will flourish. You need soil water. And by the time this corn of wheat touches the ground, the first thing that will act on the husk is the soil, water, soil, mineral resources. The water in the soil, um, you know, water is, is a universal solvent. So all the mineral resources in the soil are dissolved in water. So when the water acts upon the husk, the minerals will also act upon the hawks, and what it will do to the hawks is that it will make it decay until it tears open. Now, that process of decay looks like death, but it is in that death process that pure life from the real seed can spring forth. The same water and mineral resources that act on the hawks and kill it the reason why it, it dies is because the husk doesn't have life. The same water will absorb the seed and the mineral resources will act on the seed. But because the seed has life, it will generate the inner potential of the seed and it will spring forth. So there are two things that happen in this arrangement. There's an aspect of your service that is so controlled by the government of God that will be like a debt process. The reason why it looks like debt is that there seems to be no physical result. Right? Or you know that's what God wants you to do. But there seems to be no physical result. It seems to be unending. It seems to be never ending. It is the debt process. The husk is being attacked. The outer man is being attacked. The old man is being attacked. Because this outer man comes with his own ambition, comes with his own preferences, comes with his own expectations. And in that state, you are not valuable to God in that state. 
in that state of being a product of ambition and all of that, you are not so valuable to God. If you do anything that looks like the service of God and he begins to excel, all the ailments of the fallen nature of man is going to corrupt that thing that looks as if it is excelling. And so the standard method is that God takes you to a process that you cannot control. And the reason why he does that is to bring you to a point where your ambition, your style, your expectation suffers great loss. Are you with me? When a young lady gets married, she's so excited. Sometimes they're looking for alternatives for where to hold her. Honeymoon, South Africa seems to be like the best destination in Africa. Then you just run on the beach in, uh, in Val, glory. When you are done with that, maybe you get pregnant. You will now find that the pregnancy is a training. It is the first prescription to bring you under an economy, something that you cannot hasten, a process that you cannot pray away. Before this time, anything you want, you can get anything you want. Then the moment you take it, you will not know first three months is just for our meat. When the things are becoming heavy, there are many times you will wake up praying that they can just affect that thing. Keep some. God is beginning to teach you several things that are captured in his wisdom. One of them is process and patience that you cannot control. It is that rigorous, uncompromising process that is connected to gestation that leads to the birth of new life. If we study that alone, you will find uh, a lot of things that God is teaching us. Hallelujah. When we went to Bible school, we were taught that uh, how the gospel spread, you know. And then you come out from such a teaching lecture and you have an expectation that in four years I should have covered this ground. In 15 years I should have been here. On, by 20 years, I very good. And then you start the process. And then the process is held up under God's government. And in 14 years, you have not accomplished the first phase of that which you wrote in your book. Because he wants the corn of wheat to fall to the ground and die. If that corn of wheat doesn't fall to the ground and die, he will have so much confidence on his his intelligence on his human wisdom and on his strategy. And a lot of people still run ministry on the base of, basis of strategy and human wisdom. This is the trend now, so you align with the trend. It means you don't have a calling. A calling is not consistent with trends. You will need to be meeting God frequently for you to know how to take a curve in ministry. Not about trends. If there is nothing that can be constant, that the world system cannot control, that thing, if we, if we do ministry and it is not constant and the world system cannot control it, it means God can, can use us. We are, we, are, we are polluted. By the time you stay with God for long and then those your ambitions die out, that's when you become willing to serve the will of God. Nobody comes to God willing to serve God. You come to God with your own agenda. You come to God with your own prescription. It's when those agendas have now died that your heart is now open in sincerity to engage God. You are willing to submit to God's timing. Even if you perish, you perish. It's an adjustment. It's an inner adjustment. A corruption of the fall has been dealt with a great deal. In fact, if your strength, for instance, is beauty, and you have, you have a lot of confidence on what you can achieve by beauty, 
If God wants to help you, what he will do is the beauty won't work. You don't know, you don't have any idea. Some of us were intelligent. You have no idea. Some of us were intelligent. And then you now plot life based on intelligence and then you begin to serve Jesus and he, he, he takes control of the process and then makes you fall to the ground and die. Such that you know it's not by intelligence. You can't trust your intelligence as a currency with which to prosecute destiny. God will want every other confidence that you have had, you have to die to it. And so he's in control of the process, except gone of which falls to the ground. And so he brings you to, uh, you see, preachers of this day will not preach this scripture. Because the heartbeat of the gospel in our time is a quick fix thing. Something that affords the opportunity for, for economic establishment and economic breakthrough success. That's the heartbeat. That's the, the pulse of doctrine. You will never find fulfillment if you are not in God's will. You know what we call fulfillment? You will never find it. It's the Holy Spirit that ministers the pleasure of God on your heart when your life is in alignment with God and your heart serves the will of God. This is the traditional procedure for you to come to that point where you find the will of God and you begin to prosecute it. And the reason why you are doing it with joy is not because of results. Are you with me? It is because the Holy Spirit bears witness with your spirit that you are on track. A kingdom man doesn't evaluate his life by results. He evaluates his life by the witness of the Holy Spirit. As much as, are you here? That's, that's, it, that's what, uh, that is the basis of his evaluation. If your evaluation system is wrong, you will end up wrong. Looking back today, it is clear to me that for us as a ministry to fall to the ground and die, it was designed from heaven to be 14 years. I thought it was going to be seven. Because the last minister in these parts that broke through by the hand of God and became a phenomenon. It was by seven years of service and deliberate commitment. So I was running my own template with um, the model, with the expectation of because I did a lot of research before we started this this ministry. So the last person that wielded the mantle that is for this territory effectively it took him seven years to come into limelight so i felt if we put in seven years it will be the same we put in seven years after seven years satan visited us because even that wisdom i went to get had to fall to the ground and what because that wisdom is not consistent with our own practice. You will evolve your own, your own sequence, your own time sequence, your own. Do you understand that? It will come. Our own was 14 years. Seven times two. And heaven had written it. That if we can be faithful for 14 years. Who enter into the oppression of that territorial mantle. So after seven years, it became unreasonable to continue doing what we were doing. Um, Chinedu. No, I, I don't, I'm not saying stand up. The corn of wheat. 
will fall to the ground and die. And the Lord will move you from time into timing. You will never know your timing until you have fallen to the ground and die. That's when you will know your timing. So as a ministry, our timing is 14 years. So the next 14 year cycle is for another phase of that, of this endeavor. If we are faithful again, you will see another level of glory that is so enormous. So it's in cycles of 14 years that it will deal with. You will never know your timing. You will still be using calendar. You will still be using human time. You will never know your timing except you go through this process. And if you know your timing by this process, you can expect that within that cycle, if you are faithful, something new will open up. So it took us two times the labor that that minister used to enter into the same place. And that's why God started with us early. Two times the labor. Because in the passing of that minister, the terrain became more complicated. The activities of the devil, the hold of darkness became more com complicated in the territory. And it, it required a deeper death before we spring forth. Many people are not ready for that procedure. You know I've said that pre preachers don't preach this scripture again. So you have expectations that have no foundation. Because you have not found your timing. Your timing is consistent with the framework of seasons that lead up to the time when you bear much fruit. And your true fruitfulness in terms of grace, in terms of anointing, in terms of giftings and capacities that will make you effective. You can, you can make impact in the lives of men. Your True, your true fruitfulness in that regard is consistent with your timing. And when I say impact, an impact is different from an impression. You understand that? And you don't need to meet someone before the person makes impact on you. I've met people, not just in Nigeria, but outside Nigeria. They say they listen to our tapes every night. They use it to sleep. That's impact. And, and impact is not a function of what I'm doing. It's a function of God's commitment to what I'm doing. Because I can't make someone stay awake. Who am I? I hope you know no human being can do that. But impact is God's commitment to what I'm doing that makes what I'm doing a channel through which he can capture men, he can influence lives. The level of impact that is flowing from our labors right now is consistent with the kind of death that God prescribed that we will have to die. Do you know, I have, let me not press, let me not press, let me not press. It's very easy. When the day is the era of fruit bearing comes, when, it, when the abiding alone syndrome ends, And then the era of fruit bearing begins to manifest. Your name begins to spread. People come. So abiding alone has been taken away. So many people will not know the regime of the root taking, which took us 14 years. Maybe because we were so full of flesh that it took that time. I don't know. Keep doing, I don't know. Maybe we were flesh men and God had to wait on us to do a work. So what he's doing through our spoken ministry is not what human beings do. It is the spirit. Because our willingness to go down to the very depths activated a covenant with him that, in, that, that endeared him to us. It's on the strength of this new season that a ministry is released to bring succor to a dying world. It depends on 
how 